I'm going to be showing you guys how to transmit power in Create Mod and how to modify the speed and stress units using gear ratios. So first off, a little reminder of what we saw in the last video, we saw how the power sources work. So right here we have a windmill and it's giving us 4096 stress units and it's running at 8 RPM. So what I've done is I've attached a gearbox to the output. And from there, there's a shaft going into another gearbox, and then the shaft comes out. But wait a sec, look at these two shafts, they're spinning in opposite directions. Yeah, so when you go through a gearbox, the output will change direction. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, why would they make it like that? Well, a gearbox is actually this. It transmits its power to the other side using another cog here on the bottom so it doesn't go straight through it goes it goes through other cogs and that's why you have um, an inversion of the direction um, when you use gearboxes so if you look at the crafting recipe we can see that it's really just four cog wheels with an andesite casing and that's how they're made so that's why gearboxes work that way so we have shafts gearboxes We'll get more into the cogs later. So, for now, the next thing we learn is the conveyor belt. So this is a belt, right? So, what? It's a belt. Does it moves things? Does it convey power? Well, actually it does. So the belt, in addition to moving things, actually turns all the shafts that are part of it, right? So you can add other um, blocks or anything you want. I have this output going through a gearbox just because I wanted to change the direction. The next thing we have here are encased chain drives. So these are pretty cool. They can work, they work a lot like conveyors, but they don't move things and they have a little twist, literally. You can put a twist in your encased chain drive so you can have outputs coming to the side. And if say you wanna have an output coming from the top, well, you can do that. And then you can go back to having your outputs come out of the side. So that's another way you can transmit rotational force. Cool. So, you know, while we're at this point, I'm going to show you that we haven't changed our speed or stress units. So our stress units are still 4096 and our speed is 8 RPM, just like when it came out of this windmill. So, oh, we have some, we have some cogs up here. So these are, so there's two kinds of cogs. There's the regular cog wheel and the large cog wheel. Place them here for comparison. So these can actually be connected together. Large cog wheels can be connected at 90 degrees, whereas the small cog wheels cannot. Uh, the small cog wheels can be connected uh, to one another, whether it's vertically or horizontally. And large cog wheels and small cog wheels can also be connected together, just like that. But something interesting happens when we do this. So for example, if I I'm going to connect the large cog wheel here and that's not going to do anything so here they're both moving at the same speed but this is where it gets interesting if i add a cog wheel here well wait a sec this cog wheel is turning faster now yeah so if we put a speedometer whoa we have 16 rpm before we only had 8 rpm did we just make speed out of nothing is this free speed well we still have the same amount of stress units, so it might look like it, but it's not actually free speed. So if we connect something here, we'll see that it's actually going to consume more stress units because the faster your rotational input is, the more stress units are used. Okay, so let's do a little test. So I'm going to place a deployer here, and we're going to see that it's using 32 stress units. If I place it here, see the deployer is running faster. But now we're using 64 stress units. So when we move something twice as fast, it uses twice as many stress units. So it's not free energy. There's no such thing as a free lunch. If you want to know how many stress units something takes, you can open your inventory and look at it, and it'll tell you the kinetic stress impact. So in this case, the deployer uses four stress units per RPM. If you look at something like a piston, for example, that's also four. So is a sticky mechanical piston, actually gantries, don't use any stress units, so that is a free lunch when it comes to gantries. Okay, cool, so if we just want to change the speed, does that mean we just have to keep adding 
a uh, system of cogwheels where the large will turn a small. For forever, we just have to have a massive setup if we want to increase our speed. So I've done this two more times, so this should quadruple our speed. So we have 64 RPM. Wow. Okay. What happens if we try to double this a few more times? What's going to happen? Oh, it's spinning pretty fast. Can we just go on forever and make something spin at like a million RPM? Is that possible? Now what happens if I put another cogwheel here? What? Oh, okay. So no matter how much I try, I can't place another cogwheel here because if I did, that wheel would be spinning faster than the laws of physics in Create Mod would allow. So what is the fastest speed? The fastest speed is 256 RPM. Okay, so we can't go faster than this. So now we know how to make our rotation go faster, but do we really want to build this whole enormous setup each time? Like this is, this this takes up, look, look how much space this takes up. Do we want to do this whenever we want to have a faster speed? Well, the answer thankfully is no. There's a few ways of getting around this and I'll show you how. So. What we're doing is we're multiplying the input speed. We could make a bigger windmill that's spinning faster. That's one way of doing it. Um, let's say you don't want to have a bigger windmill, right? You're happy with your windmill. You you don't want you don't have the blocks, and honestly, you don't want to make too big of a windmill for nothing if you don't have to. Now let's look at another way of changing the speed using something called an adjustable chain gear shift. So what we're going to do is we're going to place some encased chain drives, which, by the way, you can change the orientation by right-clicking with your wrench. So I'm going to place this adjustable chain gear shift and we're going to see what happens. Okay. Let's rotate that over. Okay. It's still running at eight RPM. So we need to use redstone. So I'm going to activate it, but wait, now it's four RPM. That's slower. That's, that's not useful, right? So what if we want to go faster? Well, if we want to go faster, we have to set it up a different way. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a regular chain drive here and then on another axis, what we're going to do is we're going to place the encased chain drive. So now we're placing it here. It's running at eight. It's still running at eight. What? It's not doing anything. So wait a sec. Now let's place an encased chain drive here. And what's what's happening? Oh, now it's going to 16. So what's happening here is that the adjustable chain gear shift is making the encased chain drives that are attached to it run at twice the RPM of itself. So now we've seen the two configurations for the adjustable chain gear shift, how you can make it go slower or how you can make it go faster. But that's not all. I have something else here called the analog lever. So you activate the adjustable chain gear shift using a redstone signal, but it can also take an analog signal. So we have a signal that goes from zero to 15. So we have eight RPM here, and 8 RPM here. If I increase this speed, well, it's not going to double. It's going to go 5 out of 15 faster. If I bring this up to 7, we have 12 RPM. Now we have 13.5, 15.5, and if we go all the way, well, we get a doubling. So you have, you have a fine control using these adjustable chain gear shifts. So that's pretty cool. So is there another way? Is there an easier way to control the speed? Well, the answer is yes. And that is using a rotation speed controller. And though this is the easiest way, it's it's the most expensive way. So this is, I wouldn't say this is late game, but it's definitely not early game because you need brass and to get brass, well, you need nether access. Um, so this is the best should I say the best solution? This is the easiest, most straightforward solution, um, but it has a higher cost. It's not that high, it's just higher than what you would consider basic components. Okay, so now we have the input here, and we can see the output of the speed controller is still 16 RPM. So how does this work? Well, speed controller has this number here, and let's go around either side to get a better look. There's one on each side, and if I just scroll up, well, the output is going to be whatever speed I put it to, right? So even if I change this input speed here, right? Like if I change the input speed down to 8 RPM, 
it's not gonna affect this. This one will stay the same. Right, so if I put it up to 120, and I change the input, it's still gonna be 120. Like the, the speed controller is the boss. Whatever you tell it to put out, it's gonna it's gonna put out. It's not gonna care what you put in. You have to have enough stress units though, right? So like I said before, for every increase in speed, you also consume more stress units. So you can't just go around increasing the speed without thinking what your available stress units are. So 256 is the highest speed um, that you can put it to. Um, this, for example, if we put a deployer, let's see how much, how many stress units that uses. See, that's using almost, that's using over a thousand stress units. So remember before we're using like 32 or 64 stress units at a higher speed, it's going to eat through your stress units. So you have to keep in mind what your RPM is. If I decrease this, we see it's using a lot less. So that is a design consideration um, that you need to think about. So we know that when we add things to our system that it uses up more stress units. But what happens if we don't have enough stress units? Well, let's see. I'm going to add some more deployers here. So now we have three deployers. I'm going to add a fourth. Okay, what's going on? Oh, we're using all our available stress units. There's nothing left. I'm going to add one more. Ah! Everything stopped. Like literally it can't move anymore. What is going on? Well, this is, our system is overstressed. Overstressed means there's too much stress on it. It can't even move, it just seizes up. It can't even do anything anymore. Even the windmill, like the windmill that's powering it has stopped turning because it just can't turn anymore. So to fix that, what you have to do is you gotta take away what's overstressing it. Whew, all right. Our system is back to being able to use. So let's see that one more time. And you'll see, like, you'll see that it's overstressed. Everything just turns red and particles come out. You know, it's trying to move, but it can't. When you have a stressometer, it's going crazy, making the red particles come out. It's, it's not good. You, you want to make sure that you don't overstress your system. So the speed controller can work either way. You can put in the rotation either into the bottom part here or into the cog. So in this case, I'm going to the bottom part. What I could also do, I could also do something like this, right? I could put, um, I could put, send the input into the cog. So now this, well, the cog's not turning. Um, yeah, I'd have to do it like this. So I would send the input into the cog and the cog would sit on here and then my output would come out of here, right? So when I change this, this the speed will go up. So you can put the input on either side of the speed controller. These are all the ways of transmitting power in Create Mod, and these are all the ways of modifying the speed. So when you increase the speed, you have the same amount of stress units, but whatever you apply to it uses more stress units. So that's something to consider. 